What's up guys, Trav White here. Today we're going to be talking about five grooming hacks that every guy should know. Let's get into it. Two quick things. One, if you're on your hair or beard growth journey, come on over and join us at the Manor Means Facebook group to get any questions you might have answered. And second, please hit me up on Instagram at Trav underscore white underscore. I'm really trying to reignite that thing. I kind of left it dormant for a while, so I want to grow it again. All right, let's get into these hacks. So moving into number one, there's nothing that I hate more than a dirty hairbrush. And mainly I hate when all the hair that sheds from brushing gets stuck in there and it's really hard to get the hair out using your hands. I mean, it is possible, it's just kind of annoying and it's not the easiest thing to do. And if there's an easier way to do something, I'm all for that. So grooming hack number one is actually using a chopstick to get all of the tangled hair out. And the thinner the tip of the chopstick is, the better. I would also use the ones that have the paint coats on them versus wooden ones, because sometimes the wooden ones can have little splinters and stray pieces of wood and that can get caught in your brush. And you want to avoid that so use the ones that are already paint coat over them so this is much easier than trying to dig the hair out with your fingers so the way you're going to do this is you're going to take the chopstick and stick it down the front of the brush going down one of the columns of where all of your bristles and pins are and as you do this you're going to sort of want to push at a downward angle to get under the hair and then pull up this will loosen the hair as you move the chopstick through those columns. So at this point, you can pull the chopstick up and it will take most of the hair out. But if it doesn't get all the hair out, it at least loosens it enough to where you can just pull it out with your fingers. But this is a really easy way to get all of that tangled hair that's stuck on your brush out without having to dig it out with your fingers. So hack number two, and this is to use two tissues to pop a pimple. So you never want to pop a pimple with just your bare fingers, right? Your fingers are really dirty, they're really oily as well, and so when you pop a pimple, all the trapped sebum and bacteria kind of just spreads to the rest of your face, and then it just adds onto that oil with your fingers. With tissues, it absorbs that oil, and it also helps keep your dirty hands from spreading it around your face as well. Another benefit is when you pop with your fingers, your nails can irritate your skin and potentially even cut your face. This could increase the visibility of the irritation and the redness on your skin and it could be even more visible than before when the pimple was there so it could actually become more noticeable so tissues help block your nails from the irritation so the way you do it is you take two tissues and you wrap them around your fingers and then you squeeze the pimple at the base with the tissues wrapped around your fingers don't pop the pimple is not ready to be popped that could actually just increase the redness and visibility on your face obviously the goal is to not get acne in the first place right that's the main Goal. And that's actually where today's paid sponsor comes in, Tej Hanley. So Tej is known for providing uncomplicated skincare delivered right to your door. If you struggle with acne, they have two acne systems to help prevent breakouts. They have one for light breakouts and one for heavy breakouts. And the main ingredient in their acne cream is salicylic acid, which studies have shown that this is a superior compound for fighting acne. I also really love that they include their acne cream as a separate product rather than just putting salicylic acid like in their cleanser or something like that. Because I've seen brands put salicylic acid in their cleanser and I'm not 100% sure how well this actually gets absorbed into your skin because the first ingredient on cleanser is usually a detergent like a sulfonate or a sulfate and that strips everything off your face and so I've always wondered how well the salicylic acid then gets absorbed while a detergent is stripping everything off your face so you know I haven't actually seen like any studies that measure this but I think it's just a good idea that having an acne treatment go on last after you've cleansed after you've moisturized right this is the best way to get that salicylic acid absorbed into your skin in my opinion just having it as a separate ingredient altogether. And that's what Tiege does, so I really love that. The other great thing about Tiege is that you have complete control over your routine. So that means that you can switch between different systems, you can skip your next delivery, you can skip your next two deliveries, you can control your exact renewal date. So when the money's actually deducted from your account, you can change your delivery frequency and you can add or remove products when you want them. And the cool thing is once you hit 12 boxes, 
you get 10% off for life. So they just go ahead and take 10% off after 12 boxes. So since Tiege is sponsoring this video, they are offering a free toiletry bag with your first box. So click the link in the description. You can get started for as low as 25 bucks. All right, so moving on to hack number three, and this is how to get rid of frizzy hair with a dryer sheet. The humidity in Texas sucks, right? It, it causes a frizzy nightmare, and I don't like bringing, you know, hair brushes or oils or conditioners, leave-in conditioners with me everywhere I go, right? I wanna leave that stuff at home. But it is really easy to have a small pack of dryer sheets in the car. It also helps my car smell nice too, so it's a win-win. When I'm out in the humid environment and my hair gets all crazy, and it's actually, a little frizzy right now I can kind of just show you is you just take this dryer sheet and you just sort of rub it over the frizzy areas and it just sort of smooths it out and it really helps to tame a lot of those flyaways and it also adds kind of a nice scent to your hair so yeah that's kind of like a win-win you can get rid of the frizz while you're out and about maybe you're about to go on a date or something and then you can show up smelling like fresh laundry so definitely is a good hack if you're you know in a tight spot and your hair is just looking crazy so try this one next time you need a quick way to fight frizz so hack number four is all about manscaping right if you like keeping your beard nice and neat i'm sure you also like keeping your other beard nice and neat as well. The last thing we want down there is a bunch of red razor burn bumps from, you know, razor irritation. Please don't take a sharp razor to the pubes with just hot water. Hot water dries up the moisture on your skin and water is just not the best lubricant. So taking a blade to dry out skin and shaving hair off is the perfect way to end up with a bunch of red bumps on your love muscle <laughs> and the surrounding areas. So a really good way to prevent this from happening is to apply conditioner to the areas you're cleaning up in the shower. So this helps moisturize your skin and it helps give your skin some slip and it adds a protective layer over your dermis. So when you take the blade over it, you're not going to irritate it. <laughs> Also, a really smart way to shave is do one pass at a time. Don't go one, two, three, four in the same spot, and then one, two, three, four in the same spot. You just wanna one pass it. Boom, move to the next spot. One pass it. Boom, move to the next spot. So that's the best way not to irritate it. It's like shaving cream, but for your pubes. So next time you're trimming up your man bush, be sure to add some conditioner while you're in the shower. All right, moving on to number five. And my fifth hack for you is how to get rid of tired, puffy eyes with tea bags and a cold spoon. I actually did this this morning because I had really tired eyes just from having a four month old baby. You know, I know I kind of look tired now, but it looked way, way worse before. So this process really helped. So if you wake up really tired the next day, you have some swelling, some edema, some puffiness, this is what you're gonna wanna do. You're going to brew some tea like you normally would, put two tea bags in the mug, let it steep, drink your tea, have a nice morning, wake up, and then put the tea bags on your eyes for 10 to 15 minutes once they've cooled down. And while the tea bags are on your eyes, you're going to put a spoon in the freezer. And then after you take the tea bags off, 10 to 15 minutes later, take the spoon out and press it against the swelling for 30 seconds at a time. This is going to help reduce the swelling under your eyes and caffeine is a vasoconstrictor to help reduce a bunch of that excess blood flow under your eyes as well for swelling. So this is going to help reduce the puffiness from not getting a full night's sleep and help you look more alive, more energetic, more awake. So those are my five hacks that I have for you guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to click that link in the description to get your free toiletry bag with your Tiege order and keep on growing. Peace.